Eastern Georgian Bay, with its 30,000 islands, is the world's largest freshwater archipelago. This landscape is so distinctive that it is of global importance and recognized by the United Nations as a world biosphere reserve. Our reserve covers 347,000 hectares of shoreline and adjacent lands stretching from the Severn to the French River. This region holds a high diversity of plant and animal life. One of the reasons this is a biosphere reserve is the high diversity of amphibians and reptiles. Ten of these, unfortunately, are considered at risk. One of the ones we're very concerned about is the eastern Massasauga rattlesnake. What makes the Massasauga rattlesnake unique is that it is the only venomous snake in Ontario. This program will show you how to work safely in Massasauga habitat for both yourself and the snake. It will show you how to identify a Massasauga, what to do in the event someone is bitten, and how you can assist in conservation efforts. The Massasauga once had a much wider distribution in southern Ontario than it does today. The Massasauga is considered a threatened species. This means the snake is likely to become endangered if action is not taken. Eastern Georgian Bay is home to the largest land area where the Massasauga may still be found. However, the populations in this region are under threat due to persecution, road mortality, habitat fragmentation and loss. The Massasauga is protected by both federal and provincial legislation. One of the first steps in Massasauga conservation is learning how to identify the rattlesnake. The Massasauga has a distinct body shape. The neck is quite narrow in contrast with a wide head and thick body. A typical adult is between 50 and 75 centimeters in length with the occasional rattlesnake reaching a meter. The background color is gray to brownish gray with dark bow tie shaped blotches sitting like saddles along the back and several rows of alternating blotches along the sides. The tail is thick and has a distinct brownish rattle. A segment is added to the rattle each time the snake sheds its skin. The rattle can occasionally break off. The Massasauga may rattle a warning if you move too close or it might just stay still and rely on its coloration to stay hidden. The rattle is only a warning, not an indication the snake is prepared to bite. These timid, non-aggressive snakes would rather be left alone than risk an interaction with a predator or person. The rattlesnake belongs to the pit viper family. Heat-sensitive pits are located on either side of the head between the eye and nostril. This lets the snake find warm-blooded prey even in complete darkness. They also have eyes with vertical or cat-like pupils which aid in night vision. Distinctive dark stripes run from the eye to neck and a white line runs along the jaw. There are 17 species of snakes in Ontario of which four other species in the Georgian Bay Area are sometimes confused with the Massasauga. These are the eastern fox snake, the eastern hognose snake, the eastern milk snake, and the northern water snake. Like the name would imply, northern water snakes are usually found near water and are good swimmers both on the surface and underwater. They can be over a meter in length and their background color is gray or brown with darker bands. Older snakes may look more uniform in color. This species is not considered to be at risk. This is the eastern fox snake. Like the Massasauga, it is also considered to be a threatened species. They can be large snakes up to 140 centimeters long, yellow-brown in color with large dark blotches on the back that alternate with smaller blotches on the side. Their head varies from light brown to coppery reddish brown. With its short pointed tail, the fox snake will mimic the rattlesnake by vibrating its tail rapidly. And if it contacts something like dry vegetation, it can make a convincing rattle-like sound. Fox snakes are usually found within one kilometer of the bay and are excellent swimmers and climbers. They also hibernate communally. Please report any areas where you see numbers of fox snakes, especially in the spring or fall. 
The eastern milk snake is considered a species of special concern. That means its population is sensitive to human activities or natural events. They can be up to 90 centimeters long and have a slender body shape. The milk snake has a light milky colored background with reddish blotches outlined in black. It usually has a light Y or V shape on the back of the head. Like a fox snake, the milk snake can also make a rattle-like sound by vibrating its tail. The eastern hognose snake is also a threatened species. Like the rattlesnake, it is a thick-bodied snake, about 50 to 85 centimeters in length, with two distinct color variations. The light-faced snake is yellow-brown to gray-brown with large dark blotches along the back and sides. The dark-faced snake is slate gray to almost black with indistinct blotches. The snake gets its name from its distinctive upturned snout. The harmless eastern hognose snake is readily identified by its cobra-like defensive posture. This show includes inhaling deeply and raising and flattening its head and neck to form a cobra-like hood. The dark neck patches become more noticeable and it usually makes loud hissing sounds. If the snake continues to feel threatened, it may vomit and pretend to die by turning belly up with its mouth gaping open. When no longer threatened, the hognose snake will eventually flip over and retreat. It is important to remember that although this show is impressive, it's just to intimidate predators, and this snake is completely harmless. Any sightings of fox snakes, milk snakes, and hognose snakes should be reported to the Parry Sound Ministry of Natural Resources. Now that you can recognize the Massasauga, it is also important to recognize its habitat needs. The Massasauga makes use of different habitats throughout the year, and may move over a large area to find these important and preferred habitats. Massasaugas throughout their life cycle use a number of different types of habitats. Two of the most important ones are hibernation sites where they overwinter and areas where the females go when they're pregnant to incubate their young. These are usually in rock barrens. The rattlesnake is generally active when temperatures are over 10 degrees Celsius. Hibernation typically occurs between mid-September to early May, depending on the weather. Um, we're standing in a conifer swamp, an important hibernation habitat for the Massasauga. What we have here is we have a water table that's very close to the surface and hummocks that allow the snakes to move up and down with the fluctuating water levels. Once the snow falls, all this area will be insulated and this sphagnum moss will, will keep the, the actual surface in, in any depth from freezing. In addition to conifer swamps, Massasaugas often hibernate in shrubby swamps, bogs, or depressions in rock that support a few sparse trees. Massasaugas can hibernate on their own or in small groups. They will return to the same site each year, so hibernation sites are considered essential habitat. In all these sites, it is essential that your construction activities does not result in changes to the water levels, particularly in the winter. The areas where pregnant females go to give birth are also considered a vital habitat need. These sites often have large flat rocks and are exposed to the sun. The rocks are usually surrounded on several sides by low-lying shrubs or grasses. Here's an excellent example of where a female Massasauga will go and incubate her young. They choose an area that will provide them lots of heat and also a place to get away from predators. So if you can see this, uh, this hole right here, a female Massasauga will be able to get right under there and bask right here. So if a predator comes, like a hawk or something, it can quickly go under here. Also, this, this table rock is what we call this. It, gets, it heats up during the day, so the sun will will uh, warm this up and what happens is at, during night when it gets cold up here this table rock will actually give off heat to the bottom so the female is able to maintain her temperature which allows her to give birth to her young sooner. Rattlesnakes give live birth in late July to mid-August with an average of 12 young in a brood. A female rattlesnake reaches maturity at about five years old and gives birth likely every two to three years. The young look like smaller versions of the adult. It is important to remember that young rattlesnakes do have venom. 
Massasaugas are highly dependent on both hibernation sites and sites for rearing their young. These are the most important areas to recognize and protect from disruption. Guidelines on identifying these habitat features are available from the Ministry of Natural Resources in Parry Sound. Rattlesnakes feed mainly on small rodents and need a variety of habitats to meet their food needs. These are often areas like beaver meadows, fields, open forests, or edges of marshes. There is an increase in rattlesnake movements during the mating season, which is mid-July to mid-August, and when snakes are moving to and from hibernation sites. The eastern hognose snakes can be found in similar habitat as they forage on mainly toads. Larger wetlands and ponds may be home to the endangered spotted turtle or threatened blandings turtle. Again, if you encounter any of these species in your work area, please ensure their safety and report your sighting to the Perry Sound MNR. By being aware of your surroundings and following some simple precautions, you can ensure the safety of yourself, your co-workers, and the snake. Long pants, boots, and the use of gloves are important if you're picking up stuff from the ground frequently. Ensure you have good visibility. For example, check an area before sitting down or use a light to illuminate dark areas. If reaching into shrubs or under rock, i.e. where you can't see, do wear gloves or gently probe the area with a stick first. If you do hear a snake, stop and locate it. Move away slowly and let it retreat. Do not pick it up or harass it. Construction activities such as blasting, clearing of vegetation and soils, filling in of lowland areas, and altering water levels can negatively impact the Massasauga and other at-risk species. To help protect wildlife, please ensure that you are aware of and following all environmental guidelines for your project area. This may include maintaining consistent water levels in wetlands and wet areas, the use of blasting mats or timing restrictions on blasting, and slowing down vehicles in the construction zone. Heavy-duty silt cloth fencing, the type that is reinforced with nylon mesh, should not be used. The mesh has entangled and killed snakes. Check around equipment before starting in the morning, depending on the season. And if a snake is sighted in your work area, if possible, let the snake move away on its own. Report Massasauga sightings on your work site to your supervisor and to the MNR. If it is in a dangerous location, it can be moved safely with the right equipment and techniques. We recommend that you keep on site a garbage bin with a lid and a snake hook. A small paint roller on a wooden handle works well. It is important to be wearing boots or good footwear and long pants. Tip a garbage can on its side near the snake. Gently guide the snake into the can, being careful not to get too close. When the snake is in the container, tip the bin upright using the handling tool. Secure the lid and move the snake to a new location. Be sure not to leave the container exposed to direct sunlight for too long. This can quickly overheat the snake. The new location should be in similar habitat and within 250 meters from the point of capture. Do not cross a road for the release site. Release the snake by tipping the bin on its side and let the snake leave on its own. Snake bites seldom happen, especially if these simple safety precautions are taken. It is important to keep the risk in perspective. Typically, there are two or three bite incidents annually. The Massasauga is a small snake with a striking distance limited to half its body length. And although the venom is potent, the venom glands and fangs are small and unlikely to penetrate boots or loose clothing. The Massasauga can control the amount of venom it injects and the depth of the bite. A snake may make a dry, defensive bite and no venom is injected. This happens about 25% of the time. In the rare case of a Massasauga bite, it is essential that you know what to do. 
If you get bitten by a rattlesnake in the field, the most important thing to do is to stay calm. Don't panic. Um, panicking is only going to increase your heart rate and if you if the snake injected venom then it's going to spread the venom throughout your body which we don't want happening what you want to do is get them to lie flat and as I mentioned don't panic stay calm um, keep reassuring them arrange for transportation to the hospital um, you also want to remove any jewelry because chances are that where they've been bitten it's going to start to swell so before the swelling occurs start removing the jewelry. You want to apply a splint loosely um, and keep the injury below the level of the heart if that's possible. Cleanse the wound and always, always, always seek medical treatment. A lot of people think that you should apply ice, that you should apply a tourniquet, or you should cut the wound and suck the poison out. Never do any of these things. You're only going to cause further damage. The best thing that you can do is to stay calm and seek medical assistance. Please do not attempt to capture the snake or bring it to the hospital. This is not necessary and has the potential to do more harm. The antivenin is most effective if administered within four to six hours after the bite. It is important to remember that in the history of Ontario, only two people have died from Massasauga bites, and neither sought timely medical assistance. Thank you for watching this program. Working together, we can help protect Ontario's only rattlesnake from extinction. Please ensure that you understand and follow all environmental guidelines for your project area. Please share what you've learned and help dispel myths about how to live and work with the Massasauga. The 30,000 Islands are home to a number of species of risk, 10, 10 amphibians and reptiles in particular, the eastern Massasauga being one of them. And often I'm, I'm asked, why is, why is that important? And I'd, I'd answer that that's, that's what makes Georgian Bay special. It's part of the diversity of Georgian Bay, just as much as the pink granite and the windswept white pine that people have come here for thousands of years to appreciate. Those amphibians and reptiles are what make us what we are.